we just started episode one for friends uh, for Small Town Wanderer uh, with Chris Pepler from Seattle, <laughs> north of Seattle, lives in Bothell, but uh, works in Everett um, and is just there in the north of the hood. And he's talking about the travel being canceled and don't we hate it when our travel gets canceled. Uh, I know we have personally have experienced that and waiting for refunds still and all that. So it's no bueno, but you had some trips planned that got canceled. What, what, are, what were those trips? Uh, our family was was uh, planning a, a trip to Tecate, Mexico, where we go and uh, uh, work with a group called Baja Christian Ministries to build houses. Yeah. Um, something that my uh, my wife oversees through the school she teaches at, and um, so, so that didn't happen. Uh, my son and I had a, a trip planned to go uh, for his 13th birthday on a kind of a coming age Midwest baseball road trip to Minneapolis to see the Mariners and down to Field of Dreams and Dyersville. Uh, Iowa over to see the Phillies play the Cubs at Wrigley and then down to St. Louis and potentially Memphis. So what's your favorite stadium? Have you been in a lot? I've been to Wrigley. I've been to Fenway. Uh, I've been to most of the West Coast parks. Um, I'm nostalgic. So I, I, I like the old parks and I like that I got to Wrigley before they put the scoreboard up. The, you know, the it was the last stadium, obviously, to put in lights, but then also the last stadium to put in an electronic scoreboard. So we were there in 2012, and the Cubs won a game and got to sing Go Cubs Go. And uh, so, yeah, been to Fen been to Fenway, which was incredible. Dodger Stadium. Uh, didn't make it to the original Yankee Stadium, but I heard that in the 70s when they remodeled that, it lost all its allure anyways. Yeah. Uh, stopped by the Bronx to put my hand on the new stadium to say I've been by it. But uh, yeah, I might. I would love to make it to every ballpark that there is, and um, I just love. I just love baseball. Love being I outside. I've been to that many, and I already started a spreadsheet. I got it on Google Docs. Actually, it, my my which time I went to each stadium. That's on mm -hmm. my. It's on my bucket list of, of of life. Yeah. What uh, talk to me about Seattle? So how long have you been to Seattle? Does you, I, you I'm, I'm fellow wanderers about uh, a, a city that I, I know over here people long to be in Seattle. They mentioned Seattle and Las Vegas and Hawaii. Like those are the three. It seems like man, if we only can go there. What, what, what's yeah, the well, our best Seattle? secret, and I guess I'll uh, I'll let the cat out of the bag, is it doesn't rain as much around here as everyone says it does. One of my uh, one of my favorite jokes about the city or or comments about it is that. Uh, Living in Seattle is like having a beautiful wife who's sick most of the time. And, uh, so that's, that is a, a complaint about the city. But when when it's beautiful out, which is really June through September, um, yes. you can't beat it uh, because you can be in the city uh, right at sea level, um, right at the ocean. You can take ferries in and out of downtown Seattle. Yeah. Uh, you have you, you you can be driving to work with uh, a mountain range in front of you to the west and you can see an entirely different mountain range the cascades uh, behind you to the yeah. east the sun is rising up over the mountains and you can kayak or you can ski and you can do both in the same day um, the hiking trails are endless and in, in the mountains um, you know I've, I've only been to Colorado once but everyone in Seattle knows that the Rockies have nothing on the on the cascades because those mountains maybe fourteen to seventeen thousand feet, but you start at eleven thousand. So yeah. when a when a Washingtonian goes to the the Rocky Mountains, they're like, "This looks like our foothills." Yeah. So yeah, Seattle's a beautiful city, um, and um, yeah, it all always be home. I don't know if I'll ever live anywhere outside of this region. Uh, what yeah. what what are some what are some things in Seattle you think people should do that aren't on the norm? So if you say Pike's uh, place, you know Pike's. Yep. If you say that, I'm we're stopping this meeting right now. So, right. Yeah. Not on the norm, like man, like this is something you gotta as a as a homer there, uh, somebody should try to do. Yeah, beyond the things that you see on Monday Night Football when they when they tour through the city, um, again one of one of the beautiful things I think is um, is the margins that our city provides. And you can get caught up in the ruckus of the downtown, but again, you can escape. And, and one of my favorites is the is the Bainbridge Ferry Run. And so right out of right out of downtown, you can get on just on the the uh, Alaskan Way. You can get on a, a ferry, but Washington State ferry boat. They're all named after the indigenous tribes of of our state. Um, and you can take about a 
uh, about a 45 minute ferry ride across and get tucked back into this little cove. And so you see the water and then you see the trees extending and then beyond that you see the city and then beyond the city you see the mountains, the Cascade Mountain Range. And if you time that right and take the Bainbridge Ferry over and then come back at sunset, you see the, the beauty of the city just reflecting. Yeah. Um, if you do it at the right time of year, you can see um, uh, gray whales and, and uh, orca whales breaching in the sound. Yeah. That's, that's an incredible thing to do. I, I love doing that. Um, I, I, yeah. I, you know, we haven't known each other for that long, uh -huh. yeah, but uh, we just are proving every time we talk that we are brothers from another mother because <laughs> that exact description of something that you should do in Seattle that nobody thinks you should do Mm -hmm. is exactly what I tell people when I send them to, to Seattle is exactly what you just said. I go for the price of your money to get on that ferry and go out to the middle of nowhere, you know, out to the island and just hang mm -hmm. out there for a little bit and then turn around and come back at, at night. I mean, you get this basically a cruise ship. On, yep. It's the sound, but you feel like you're on the ocean and you, you turn that corner, you see the city and you see the Ferris wheel and the space needle. It's all of those things like, you're like, man, people pay big bucks for that, and you're on a you're on a passenger ferry. Yeah. Oh, it's like, do not go to Seattle, folks, if you've never and, and not do that. Like, skip the Space Needle. I think. I think the space, like, if you got time, do the Space Needle. Not worth it, in my opinion. But that trip to look at the Space Needle is amazing. Yeah, it's so expensive to go there, and I think of some of some of my favorite restaurants in the city are the ones that are tucked away. Um, there's a great restaurant just a little bit. Uh, away from where you would see them throwing fish at the market, uh, probably a three minute walk up post alley uh, to a restaurant called the pink door. And there's right, no, right. I'm going to put these in our episode notes. Okay. Absolutely. And then yeah, check out the pink, door. the pink door. And the only, the only way that you can find it is to look for the pink door and push it open. Uh, <laughs> and, there's no uh, name or nothing. Nothing. It's just a pink door. And so you kind of got to know that it's there. Uh, but you come in on the second story because all of that post alley is whole built on a hill yep. uh, as it as it just kind of cascades down into the Puget Sound. Uh, the whole city of Seattle was built on hills. And uh, so you come in and you're immediately uh, on the second story looking into a big open room and you go down a set of stairs and there's there's tables there and a trapeze artist. And, and so the, the pink door, you feel like you've been to a place uh, where a billion people go when they come to Seattle, but nobody finds. Um, and everybody finds the gum wall, everybody finds the fish market, um, everybody finds those things, but the pink door, got to check that out. And then our other favorite, um, over in West Seattle, uh, the city of Seattle is on what's called Elliott Bay, uh, which is an inlet off the Puget Sound, which is an inlet in of itself off the Pacific Ocean. So you just kind of get further and further into this. But if you go to West Seattle, over to Alki Point, which is where they originally tried to build the city, but it was too windy. Um, to build the city there, uh, there's a restaurant called La Rustica, and it's a traditional... Like, like the rooster? Like, yep, La Rustica. So uh -huh. and it's an Italian restaurant. It's probably got eight to ten seats okay. uh, inside the restaurant. It's old brick. It's an old brick building with ivy growing up the side, and and uh, when you get inside, you, f you feel like maybe you're actually in Italy or somewhere that's really old. Uh, <laughs> So that's that's another one of my favorites in terms of really cool dining locations that you wouldn't normally find. Yeah, I won't see. Um, and then if you're just if you're a little bit blue collar, uh, which which I tend to be, those are a little bit more upscale restaurants. You got to go to Tats, which is in Pioneer Square, which is the oldest, most historic part of the city of Seattle. T a c k. T a t s Tats, yeah, like yeah. tattoos. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, that I my my roots are in Philadelphia. Both my parents are from Philly, and all my relatives are there. And uh, my my uncle owned a a, a deli and a Philly cheesesteak restaurant when I was growing up. So I knew what a real Philly cheesesteak was like. With, with side with, note, and I, yeah. I, I those two Philly cheesesteak places in Philadelphia. I don't remember the name. Gino's or what are they like? They're right across the street from each other. Yeah, like. I had one of each at like 11 p.m. at night once, and it was probably still to this day one of the more magical experiences of my life. It's fantastic. I tell you which one's better. I didn't get involved with the argument. I just enjoyed both of them, 
and the yeah. experience around people eating it all kind of over a garbage can and like oh it's amazing yeah okay you either got to have it with with uh cheese whiz or provolone that's how you got to have it and they yeah. cut the meat but at any rate there's a family from philadelphia that moved out here and opened an authentic philly cheesesteak wow. uh, shop in pioneer square called tats and they got all the Villanova and Philadelphia Phillies and Eagles and Sixers jerseys hanging up in there. And uh, there's a cake that only is produced in Philadelphia called Tasty Cakes. And it's yeah. it's as crappy as a cupcake that you'd get from Hostess, but it's only from Philadelphia. And you know it's a legit Philly place if they've got uh, Tasty Cakes for sale. So the butterscotch crumpets and you know, all the rest, they got all the different kinds. And uh, so that's a, that's a great place to go. Um, and they're fast. The line is always out the door. They're only open four hours a day, but they keep the line moving. Wow. Um, uh, Chris, I'm with uh, Chris here at Pepler at our episode number one of uh, small town wanderers. Uh, thank you for again, being on my inaugural, um, uh, trip here. I don't know how long it could be the last episode. It could be the one of 500. Awesome. Glad but to be number one first, and I, I love Seattle. Seattle still, we lived out there for eight years, and just kind of a, a second love for us. Um, I always think of cities of like I've been at, and like most cities, I'm like oh, I've been there. I don't ever need to go back. Seattle, I'm always like, hey, if I can get back to Seattle, I, I never, I never say no. Um, as you think outside of Seattle, and even and we're talking to small town people. Mm -hmm. uh, but also talking to city people, like just to get out a little bit. Is there like like just the coolest little um, uh, uh, city that you think, man, just to go hang out there for a day and enjoy life? And if you say Coopville on Whidbey Island, <laughs> I'm going to fist bump you because that's what I'm thinking. Like something like that, you know, just yeah. you know, get some, get some uh, man, that's a great friends. If you've never been to Coopville. Uh, you need to get there. Whole Whidbey Island is awesome, but Coopville is, is pretty cool. There's a place there. I don't remember where I got mussels that were really good right on the water. In the dock there. Yep. What, 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 what would you say? What's around you there that it's like, man, a small town that just gets your fancy? Yeah, I've got two that I go to, um, and they're both kind of hidden away. You know, this whole area, this whole part of the country is built on hills, and I, I like thinking about getting kind of getting down into the bowl or somewhere, but they talk about Edmonds, which is – just mm -hmm. it's it's a 25 minute drive north of seattle in fact the the sounder train goes right along the water's edge from downtown and you can take a train from edmonds and be in downtown seattle in just uh 20 minutes uh, but they talk about the bowl of edmonds and it's it's where the even the fm radio dial gets fuzzy because it's just tucked away right on the puget sound and you look right immediately across to a little town called kingston there's about 13 or 15 of these ferry routes in the puget sound so there's the one that goes from downtown seattle over to bainbridge and bremerton and then just north of that there's another one that goes from kingston over to edmonds and you can hop on that ferry out of downtown edmonds for about eight dollars round trip and there's a little town over there you can get pizza and ice cream but edmonds is full of fun art galleries um, you, there's a, there's an underwater scuba diving park, um, right down at the park is called Brackett's Landing right next to the ferry terminal. And they've sunk in all kinds of little ships down in there. And there's always scuba divers. Um, uh, there's salmon and there's rockfish and, um, we got seals all over the place and starfish and sea anemones. And so you yeah. can go scuba dive right into this little underwater water garden down there. Uh, or put your hammock up between some trees and watch the ferries go by. Uh, tons of great restaurants. There's one down there called Salt and Iron, which is a great surf and turf place. Um, so I love Edmonds. And the other one that I really love is a little and bit more. Edmonds, little people don't know Edmonds. Every street's named after a, a, a tree. Yep. Yep, absolutely. It's uh, That's a cool town. The other one I really like, which is a little closer now, to most home. People in my neck of the woods would still call that the big city. The big city. So you described it perfectly because it is really its own little culture, um, yep. but it's still high density. I mean, there's still there's lots of amazing, cool shops, and again, yeah, it's its own little little cove of the world, but still yep. connected to this huge, yep, collaboration. There's a little one, and Seattle's booming like anywhere else. So, so towns that were itty bitty are now. Um, people yeah. wish they could live that close to the city, but the next one out is Snohomish, and that's about a 20 minute drive from us, and um kind of the claim to fame down there is the antique shops they have like an, a ton of incredible antique shops in snohomish 
and it's right on the Snohomish River, which uh, which then flows right into downtown Everett. So it's about 15 minutes from Everett. Um, but they have uh, they've got a, a skydiving company, the Snohomish Skydiving Company. So you can just go down there and park next to the airport and watch idiots jump out of perfect good airplanes, um, which I'm thinking about doing for my 40th birthday in three months. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, love Snohomish. Uh, you want to go further out, uh, there's an incredible town about two and a half hours away called Leavenworth out Highway 2, which is this beautiful Bavarian village um, tucked into the Cascade Mountain Range. And yeah. you feel like you've gone to Bavaria or some town in Germany. And they have an Oktoberfest every year, which is incredible. And people are wearing their Lutenhausen and playing their accordion, and their tubas. And, adventure. Uh, what, what do you guys do with your kids when you travel? Um, we, you know what, the, like, you don't have to go very far. Uh, in fact, we like to try and stay, stay nearby in the summertime because it's so beautiful. And so, yeah. uh, we're, we're not in this echelon, but we have, we have friends with homes on the water. And so, uh, we have, we have friends that have a home on Camino Island, which is just another island next to Whidbey Island, um, and along the Tulalip shores. And so we know people with homes that are right on the Puget Sound. And if, if you can be up here, or you know a friend with a boat, there's no other place that you want to be in the summer that's any better than here. Um, so, but we travel, uh, we, have, we have a place that we stay over in Eastern Washington, south of Leavenworth. There's Highway 2 that runs across the state and then there's I-90, which I think goes through your state. Yep. Uh, but if you go on I-90 out to the Columbia River, uh, there's a community out there that we stay at and uh, it's got a view of the river. It's out in the middle of the desert. That's the cool thing about Washington state is that uh, Western Washington is very, very, very green. And three hours from here, you can be in the scorching 110 degree desert uh, with tumbleweed blowing all over the place. So we go out there for a week uh, to a place called Desert Air. Um, uh, we like to we like to camp over near Wenatchee, which isn't you have to go through Leavenworth to get there, but again on the Columbia River. And um, yeah, we camp out there with our family every year. We kayak and ride our bikes and have ice cream. Every uh, what's a city in America that you like? You're like haven't been to, but you're like, man, I would really love to visit it. I would love to get to the South. I'd love to get to uh, to Charlotte. Uh, I'd love to get down to Charleston. I'd love to get down to Savannah, Georgia. Um, I'd love to get to New Orleans. I just, I, I, I love the. Um, uh, I mean, every every area has got a, a stereotype. I guess in Seattle area, they talk about the Seattle freeze, where everyone's interested in being, you know, smiley on the surface. But then, if you want to go deeper, people say it's harder to to do that. Um, I'm not as familiar with Southern hospitality, but I was uh, in Nashville last year, driving around in the back neighborhoods, and everyone does have a rocking chair on their front porch. And I think, yeah, yeah that's what I that's what I like about the you know the Southern hospitality and every. Every culture, every area has its uh, has its deep defaults and 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 um, hangups, but just to be down there and experience the history and the big trees and the see some alligators and and the yeah. steamboats, I would love to. I guess you can do a steamboat tour uh, up through the inner islands down there off the Carolinas and yeah. something like that would be just absolutely incredible. It would be the reverse. Uh, so when you travel like that, um, you'd have to do reverse um, travel as far as don't go in the summer because that's when it's awful there. So you would go. Yeah. So you, when you want to get out of Seattle, you would go do something like that. Yep. And that's what we all say up here north, northern Wisconsin. It's like, yeah, why would you want to leave in the summer? Like this is why you live here. Um, yep. You don't live here for the winters, and it's still cold. I'm walking out. With my, I got my over my back here. I got my two winter coats here. That my one's my working one. One's I was. I mean, I'm wearing my winter coat still. Yeah. I hate being cold. Yeah. I gotta go down there. Um, and just experience that. Yeah, that's just a, an amazing um, a cultural experience of the South. When you said the South, I thought you were talking about San Diego first is when you were. When you oh, were, yeah, we're we're yeah. up and down the West Coast all the time. I've you I've just, fully explored that part of the country. That people on the West Coast don't when you say the South, you mean you mean the South. South. Yeah, the Southeast, yeah. you know, yeah. um, that's why I was thinking was, people call it. We're in the Midwest right here. I'm like, no, this is pretty North Central. Uh, <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, right. What if you as you traveled and gotten about? Um, where's been the nicest people you've ever met? The Sorry. nicest people that I have met, when I think about it, have been in Billings, Montana. Um, there, there is a hospitality, a Montana uh, Western type of hospitality that is just—it's not Seattle, and you don't feel like you're that far from here. I mean, 
Montana's a lot closer than, you know, than South Carolina. But being out there um, with, uh, uh, with the Petzels family and, and other people uh, that we know, like, they'll just stay up all night and feed you food and, yeah. and uh, give you their choice meats of things they've killed in the woods. And, and uh, yeah, there was just a, there was a, a beautiful sense of hospitality and, 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 and genuineness from, uh, from people that I've met in, in Montana. Sweet dude, uh, I don't want to keep you much longer um, unless you have you have other things you'd love to talk about. I, I would love to know. Um, do you have like a bucket list of, of travel places that you feel like you just you, you got to get to before you're before you're fifty? You just said you're gonna turn forty. Ten years, like man, I really wish this was gonna happen. I would love to get to the Amalfi Coast in Italy. Okay, uh, I think if I could go somewhere, that would be uh, that would be a really really great place to to go. Uh, I'd love to see Machu Picchu in Peru, mm -hmm. um, and uh, close that down too. So that's some place you got to get to sooner than later. Oh, really? Just to preserve the, the really ruins? starting to crack down on tourism there. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe put that higher up on the list. Um, I would, I would love to get. It's so funny being in Seattle because everyone thinks this is Southern Alaska as it is, but I've never been to Alaska, <laughs> uh, and I always think about. Uh, I always think about one of those Alaskan cruises to see the glaciers, what are going yep, away, yep. grizzly bears and all that. I just can't convince my family yet to take a cruise on to somewhere where it's 60 degrees. Yep. Uh, but I'm tempted I all the a, time. I'm I have a good friend I can send with you because he wants to go on that same cruise. And I'm like, eh, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, there, I'd love to. There are, some, there are some really nice ones uh, up there that get you into some spots that are pretty sweet. Yeah. And then you, don't have, uh, you don't have air travel from there. You just jump on there like. Take the train down to the the port there in Seattle and yeah. get out of there. Yeah, you can totally do that. And things are opening up in Seattle. Everett, um, which is where everyone understands the big Boeing plant to be in the Seattle area, is is literally just right in our neighborhood. Yep. Uh, but they've just opened up Everett as a commercial airline uh, spot. And so, if you have a chance to fly yep. in or out of Everett, they've only got they've got two gates. So it's like checking into the library. Uh, and then everything's designed to to help you experience travel like you were in the 1950s. So it's like Frank Sinatra music and a wow. full bar. And um, I didn't realize that. I I just fun. saw that when we were going to fly out there. We were looking at going to Everett, and it, the prices from Minneapolis were no different. Yep. Yeah. If you can fly in or out of Everett, it's uh, it's really remarkable. So um, Machu Picchu, Alaska, Italy. Yep. Uh, all It'd be fun to do an African safari tour, something like that. Oh, now so, you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, you're, you know, you to, now like, you're being gluttonous for the next now, decade. Now I am, right? Now I got places I want to I want to go to. <laughs> you don't do that until you're in your fifties. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm just feeling a little stuck at home right now. So yeah, I know. Um, you know. Uh, I will give one other plug for something that yeah. most people would not do in Seattle and it's the closest thing in my heart to this city is the beauty that comes from interacting with the urban poor um yeah and, tell us about that because you have done that for for years yeah uh, it was uh it was 21 years ago when I met a man named Peter for the first time and it took me six months to build up the courage to talk to Peter uh, because he was just uh, a you know a lump of human flesh laying on a sidewalk day after day. But having spent time in, in downtown Seattle when I was in college, going to Seattle Pacific University, I would spend a lot of time downtown. And the thing that that blessed me and and just kind of wrecked my soul forever was realizing that that people in the city that are experiencing homelessness are more than needs walking around on two legs. That that they're people with names and yeah. faces. Wow. And when I discovered that that Peter had a name and a face and a story. It, it just changed my perspective and, and Seattle is known like San Francisco and some other cities around the nation is just having homelessness crises that are out of control and opioid crisis that are out of control and it, and it truly is, but there is beauty under that. And there's a way to engage with poverty um, that uh, addresses the relationship over the resource. And so for 20 years in the city, the most beautiful thing, uh, most beautiful relationships have come from, from those who, um, are the poorest of the poor in terms of resource. But as I've built relationships with uh, individuals experiencing homelessness and dealing with the ravages of mental illness and addiction, 
um, you find the depth and richness of relationship to just uh, be off the charts. And so an organization that I've been involved with for many, many years is Seattle's Union Gospel Mission. Um, and their, uh, their, their marching orders and, and their convictions say that homelessness is not primarily a resource issue, it's a relationship issue. And so the, the organization has just created uh, great avenues forward to build relationships with people experiencing homelessness so that they can, um, uh, they can step out of homelessness through the avenue of relationships. So if you want to do something that nobody would do in Seattle coming to tour, you can go out on search and rescue. Every night the city sends out or the mission sends out five vans on uh, strategic routes to different parts of the city. And they go every night to build relationship and to uh, welcome people back into life, to remind people that they're human and they hand out socks and blankets and sandwiches, um, but invite people into a, a life worth living. And you can sign up at UGM.org. If you're coming to Seattle, uh, I would just do it a few weeks in advance, like any other tourist opportunity. Sometimes, um, you know, the secret's out in our city and people go out on this all the time. But if, if wow, you want to be out from 7 p.m. to 12 p.m. and, and and experience what it's like to help combat uh, homelessness and drug addiction. That's what I would do in the city above anything else that I've suggested. It'll wow. change. That's so awesome, bro. And it, it, we're always looking for experience and mm -hmm. I'm a huge all-inclusive guy for Cancun. Like, like yeah. I want to go there and I don't want to think about anything. I want to drink too much and eat too much and get, yeah. it, get yeah. burned. But, I, <laughs> but I only can do that for so long. Like there's something, there's always something like, I don't know anything about Cancun. Like I only go down there and I go to these resorts and, and so it, it but it's in our hearts always to go longer. I was just thinking, man, if I even go any longer, like I got to actually know this city. I actually have to get to know what's happening. And, and I think we long for that as humans really to go, you know, and it's not just patronizing to go, Oh, we're going to take a couple hours during our, you know, as we go to Disneyland, we're also going to do this. I think it really is truly good for your own soul to, to experience something a little bit different. Again, if it's uh, maybe just a little offshoot restaurant or, you know, don't go to the thro fish thrown place, like go to, go to some of these other things that are out there that are, could really bring life to you and to, to, to others. There's so many things to experience out there as you wander around. Yeah. And it's, it's not a, it's not a plug. I didn't even plan this, but I happen to be wearing this, this sweatshirt today. Let's see if I can see it. Um, it, uh, it looks like a smiley face. Uh, but a, a winking smiley face with a nose, but it also, you see the three letters there, O-L-U. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, uh, 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 a philosophy that the mission wanted to put, so that, uh, push, so they put out uh, a clothing brand called O-L-U, um, which isn't active right now, but it stands for Others Like Us. Okay. And it's meant to play two ways, like, yeah, others like us, people, people like us, yeah. um, which everybody wants to be liked. But the deeper meaning is this idea that others there are others like okay, us like us. Yeah. Uh, and there is no difference between us and them in regards to homelessness and addiction. There's just, there's just us, there's yeah. no us in them. And uh, when I found out that a huge part of who I am belongs in the recovery program at Seattle's Union Gospel Mission, it, it just wrecked and changed my life forever in the best way possible. Um, so you truly uh, exemplify the word wander too. I mean, you got, you're going to yeah. wander around and just try to, where are people, what are they doing? And I want, I want to see, and once you break through, and this is with any culture, like you broke through and you, you found out, uh, what was his name Peter, right? You said, um, you know, Peter's name, like there's something about that when you, when you step out and, and do that. And it literally it's takes you time. But once you've done it once, then you're like, oh, I can do this, do this other places. You're muted. You just muted yourself. There we go. There we All go. right. Well, uh, Chris Pepler from uh, north of Seattle. Uh, great. I I have no idea what's going to happen with the small town wanderer. And as I just get out there and try to help people see the world differently, uh, thank you for letting us see it differently. Uh, this, this episode number one. Episode number one. So I'm your first guest and I'll be your first followers. So just let me know where to sign up to listen to more. Well, I mean, I'm on Instagram. I got, yeah, I got a website. I got to figure out. All right, how, I'll go find it. You know, if, you know, I'm on Facebook. I got to get find somebody, you know, that can uh, help me, uh, you know, produce this stuff now. Yeah. Well, now that we're all video editors. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, man. God bless and uh, happy travels to you and, and to your family. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you.